Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, April 20th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Tonight, a U.S. warship heads to Yemen. Then, hookers for Hillary. And filmmaker Kevin Booth talks Mary Jane. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. But now they don't so much hide it. They're kind of like, yeah, you're dumb efforts. We run the drugs. Don't let us catch you with them. We'll put you in prison. <laughs> well, in a move that is sure to exacerbate calls for campaign reform, a group of sex workers has officially endorsed Hillary Clinton for president. The girls at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch are calling their campaign Hookers for Hillary, and they're promising an extra bit of time in the bedroom for anyone who donates to Clinton's campaign. Hmm, nothing shady there. Now, the girls give their four points for why they think Hillary should be president. Um, they've cited her ability to negotiate with foreign leaders, saying it's similar to how they communicate with foreign men through a language barrier. And, of course, they also appreciate uh, that they now have health insurance, which they've never had access to before Obamacare, because what they're doing is legal prostitution so they can qualify for affordable health care. And Air Force Amy says that she'll be voting for Hillary because I'll stick by any woman that stands by her man in a cheating relationship so that she can further her career. Hmm, <laughs> such a feminist here. Now, it's really not a lot different than what they're doing out on the campaign trail, right? Pimping out the country uh, for a little bit of that campaign cash. So it's very apropos. Ted Cruz actually joked that running for office is real simple. All you have to do is just surgically disconnect your shame sensor. So there you go. But there's even more shady business deals that Rand Paul has been saying for weeks might be just what is going to actually take Clinton down it's a new book set to be released in May called Clinton Cash. And writer Peter Schweizer investigates donations made to the Clinton Foundation by foreign entities. And this book is asserting that foreign entities who made payments to the Clinton Foundation and to Mr. Clinton through his high speaking fees received favors from Mrs. Clinton's State Department in return. He gives some examples, including a free trade agreement in Colombia that benefited a major foundation donor's natural resource investments, uh, a lot of development projects in the aftermath of the Haitian earthquake, and more than a million dollars in payments to Mr. Clinton by a Canadian bank and major shareholder in the Keystone XL pipeline. And of course, this was right around the same time that all of that was being worked through the State Department. Now, Clinton aides, they're, of course, calling this absurd conspiracy theory and just another conservative hit job. So once again, poor Hillary is the victim. For a woman who's really trying to be a strong feminist, she sure does play the victim role a lot these days. Uh, but Schweizer writes that from 2001 to 2012, the Clintons' income was at least $136.5 million. So that was during Hillary's years of public service, the Clintons conducted or facilitated hundreds of large transactions with foreign governments and individuals, and some of these transactions have put millions in their own pockets. And of course, the Clinton Foundation has come under scrutiny for accept accepting foreign donations while Mrs. Clinton served as a Secretary of State. And you know that they think that this at least looks a little corrupt because just last week, the foundation changed their policies uh, so now they're going to prohibit giving by any other nations uh, in the Middle East. So they can see that this is a little bit counterintuitive. She's uh, saying that she's for women and children while accepting huge donations from countries like Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates who are beheading gay people or throwing women in jail uh, who've been raped, victims of rape. They're being thrown in prison uh, for committing adultery. So here, she doesn't mind doing shady business deals with, with uh, these type of people. They're, in fact, our allies in the Middle East. So it'll be very telling in the coming days uh, just where the media stands. Will, will they cover this story Chipotle Gate style, or are they going to just go the whole email scandal route and not cover it at all? You know, we're not going to forget about those emails 
which we're sure you just deleted because they had your yoga routines in them and they didn't actually provide any evidence of all these foreign donations and the kickbacks that these countries are going to be receiving from the State Department, right, Hillary? Now, is it time for people to stop calling InfoWars conspiracy theorists? Now we have the head of PayPal saying that they want brain chips to replace passwords. Oh my goodness, huge conspiracy theorists here. This is PayPal's global head of developer evangelism. Jonathan LeBlanc is pushing implantable brain chips as a replacement for passwords, but he insists that such technology must be made to fit inside cultural norms before it is accepted by the general public. Oh, so obviously we can expect a huge psyop coming to get people to accept that this is culturally normal. But listen to some of the options here, he says. This is in a presentation called Kill All Passwords. Uh, LeBlanc admits that the future of authentication security is going to get creepy and traditional passwords are going to be phased out due to their innumerable security flaws. Uh, but he's in envisioning brain chips to measure thought patterns so that childhood memories could be invoked by the user to unlock their computer. So no longer having to remember who your first boyfriend was or the name of the street that you lived on. Now these brain chips are just going to scan your memories to give you access to your vehicle, your computer, to file your taxes, all of these things. And LeBlanc says that realistically, the ones that are going to succeed, whether it's embeddable, ingestible, injectable, or what have you, these are the ones that are going to play into cultural norms, the ones that are going to meet the demands of the populace overall and not be creepy. So even though they seem creepy today, in the future, they will not be creepy. They'll be culturally normal. Now, this uh, is also echo echoed by Google, who in 2013, it was revealed that they were working on an ingestible microchip that would turn on a user's entire body into a biological authentication system for your cell phone, cars, doors, and other devices. And they're also developing a wearable e-tattoo that can decipher a user's thoughts by detecting the unvocalized words in their throat. At what point in our society is any of that going to not become creepy? So obviously we're going to have to have a huge onslaught of science fiction movies showing everyone how cool it is with these e-tattoos that can read the thoughts that before they're even vocalized in your throat. Now that is frightening to me. Hopefully I'll be long gone by then. Now we have another story coming out about the war on driving. It's all about control. All of this is about controlling you. And of course, with your cell phone and your passwords and your cars and everything, they want to be able to control access to that. So they've got to control you. Now we have automakers wanting to outlaw gearheads from working on their own cars. They claim that modern vehicles are too complex for home mechanics to fix. And this is the Association of Global Automakers. They're a lobbying firm for 12 manufacturers, and they're asking that the U.S. Copyright Office prevent car owners from accessing computer programs that control the functioning of a motorized vehicle. This will include personal automobiles, commercial motor vehicles, and agricultural machinery for purposes of lawful diagnosis and repair or aftermarket personalization, modification, or other improvement. They say that users have to access a substantial amount of all their copyrighted material in order to diagnose and repair their cars. And of course, they're so concerned because they say that if a person goes in and removes programs uh, at a whim, they're highly likely to take vehicles out of compliance with federal, re uh, federal requirements there. So of course, they're so concerned that, you know, if you modify your car, you're not gonna be able to sell it. Oh my goodness, no. What this is really all about is people who have been working on their own cars for decades uh, are not gonna like these new autonomous self-driving cars. And of course, the number one way to, to get to keep people from getting behind the wheel is to keep them from getting under the hood. And that's what this is all about. Just more war on driving, more control, all about the self-driving cars that are coming in the future. Now stick around because joining me in studio will be David Knight, 
We're going to talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership and how Obama has just gained fast-track authority from Congress. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. There's no doubt that our country is in serious trouble right now. And if you're wondering how on earth we ever got in this situation, well, I'll tell you how. When the Democrats showed their true colors, you got angry and you elected Republicans. And then when the Republicans showed their true colors, you got angry and elected Democrats. And when anyone suggested to you that both parties were corrupt and that neither side were looking out for your best interest, you acted like they were crazy. But the real definition of crazy is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. That's why it is vitally important that you wake up, America, and break the matrix. Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv, and The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Well, a deal has been reached on fast-track authority for President Obama so he can go on ahead and finish negotiating one of the world's largest trade deals. Of course, we're talking about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, but that's not all. Now, joining me in studio is David Knight. David, so this fast-track authority is just unprecedented. Here we have the Republicans now siding with Obama, whereas the Democrats are saying, hold up, we shouldn't do this. What's going on? Well, it's actually been a bipartisan thing when they had NAFTA passed because George H.W. Bush, when he was running for re-election against Clinton, they were both pushing NAFTA. And the only person speaking out against it at the time was Ross Perot. He's talking about a giant sucking sound. Well, of course, that's not just the money. That's also your sovereignty that's going down the mm -hmm. drain. And I think the thing that bothers me the most is the fact that we have this fast track process. In other words, we can have, should have a public discussion about what's in this. It ought to be our representatives who are deciding this or crafting this. Instead, as they do in so many different ways with the bureaucracy, uh, with the BLM, or with whether it's the IRS, or these various agencies, the EPA, they let them go their own way. They abdicate their legislative authority that they should be doing. Basically, do nothing but fundraising is what they're doing now. So they pass this off to these corporate lobbyists who are doing this secretively. Right. And so what we've had here now is a bipartisan 
agreement with the leaders of the Republican Party as well as uh, the leaders of the Democrat Party with Obama saying, we're not going to have this as an open process. Mm. They're going to have a vote on it, okay? And they say they're gonna give them more time instead of just dumping it in, in a couple of days on them. Of course, they fast-tracked this agreement. So I guess, I'm not sure if we can trust them to actually give people enough time to look at the thousands of pages, but it's gonna be this massive omnibus bill, mm -hmm. just like they do with the budget bill every year, just like they do with the NDAA. And you know all the stuff that they cram into the NDAA. Right. Okay, the section 1033, uh, the 1023, indefinite detention without trial, all this stuff, even John McCain's bill to hand over to a foreign corporation the uh, copper mining rights to this area of Arizona. It's gonna devastate the area, but that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing we're going to see with these trading partnerships. Right, and a lot of people who are against us are arguing that trade deals in the past have failed to deliver on their promises. Yes. And they've you know, made the country much worse, put it in a much worse uh, position. But here that they're saying that you know, Ob President Obama is embracing this legislation. He's saying it's gonna level the playing field, give our workers a fair shot, and for the first time, it will include strong, fully enforceable protections for workers' rights, the environment, and a free and open internet. But that's not really what we've been hearing just from no. the things that have leaked. That's right. The only information that we really have from this is what WikiLeaks has leaked to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, WikiLeaks, because we can't get the truth from our legislative uh, representatives, and we're not getting the truth, certainly, from Obama. Obama is basically referring to NAFTA. It's like, okay, we lied to you about an, a NAFTA, okay? It was a horrible deal. We've lost 61% of our manufacturing, uh, and we've gone into debt with a trade deficit every year, and the last 14 years have been 14 record trade deficits. But that's okay, this is gonna be all different, right. trust me, okay? What they're not even talking about, Leanne, is that it's, it's worse than just the economic aspects of it. There's also the sovereignty issues of it. And we're seeing the sovereignty issues come into play. People are talking about it gradually now. We see Petraeus and Pelosi talking about, yeah, we don't have America anymore. Yeah, we don't have national borders anymore. Uh, it just doesn't matter to them anymore. Now they're talking about the sovereignty issues with NAFTA as they're putting this next level to. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially these building blocks to a global world governance that mm -hmm. is run by corporations. One of the few things that they did, they threw them a bone and said, yeah, okay, we haven't really been telling you about what's going on, so we're gonna give you a chief transparency officer. <laughs> what a load of malarkey that is. that is. like the Ebola czar? <laughs> exactly. So effective. <laughs> yeah, we've gotten czars before, so now we've got a chief transparency officer who's gonna talk to us. We're gonna wind up with Investor State Dispute Settlement Court, mm -hmm. okay? And that basically has the multinational corporations at the same level as states in terms of if they, if they see that there's something that they think impacts their business or their profits, they can sue the nation, and we've already seen that happen with NAFTA, although it's not being reported by the mainstream media. Mm. These proceedings are pretty hard to find because they're done in secret, in arbitration. But we know it's gonna happen. It's already happened here. There's been billions of dollars turned over from American taxpayers to these multinational corporations because their profits were impacted by regulation. It might right. be, for example, let's talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Let's say that they decide in Japan that they want to restrict uh, nuclear power because of Fukushima, or they want to shut that down. Mm -hmm. Well, these companies could come back and say, you're, you're impacting our profits, so you pay us. Mm -hmm. That's how this could turn out. Wow, and we, we're already seeing that type of issue crop up with uh, countries denying Monsanto and other yes. biopharmaceutical, uh, geoengineering, things like that from entering their country. That's right. And so now they're saying, well, you're cutting into our profits. But here are the differences is now they're gonna be uh, taking them to these independent tribunals where someone outside of everyone's... When they say that this is gonna be a big win for American agricultural uh, products, what they're talking about is forcing on these other countries our genetically modified organisms mm -hmm. that they have outlawed in their countries, and rightfully so. Right. There, there's a massive uh, influx of organic products and having to import them to satisfy demand in America because the American corporations just wanna give us this synthetic garbage, but mm -hmm. other countries have basically said, no, you're not gonna do that. So they're gonna use this treaty to override that. They're gonna use this treaty to control the internet, to do things that they could not pass legislatively like CISPA, that they've tried repeatedly to, and, and failed. They're gonna use digital rights to try to control the internet. There's a lot of things in here besides trade, but it is fundamentally about uh, sovereignty. And what people should be really angry about is the fact that our elected representatives have enabled the corporate lobbyists to write these rules and yeah. have just abdicated any responsibility 
uh, for, for having anything to do with this. It's going to come in with an up or down vote. They're going to say it's too important. I had to vote for this, this, and this. I know that was bad, but I had to it was a take it all or leave it all. That's the way this is going to go down. Yeah, absolutely. That, and everyone's concerned because it's taken a few years for this to pass. Well, there's a reason why. It's because it's such a huge trade deal. It's going to affect so many different sectors around the world. And we know that it's absolutely going to impact jobs because of something that they've had to include in this package along the way to get Democrats to go along with it. Uh, trade adjustment assistance. So this is trade adjustment assistance. It's going to be aid to workers whose jobs are displaced by global trade. Let me tell you how that's going to work out. Okay, we're just looking at this thing in Oregon where they were coming against the miners, the BLM. They're very, it's an economically very depressed area because the U.S. Forestry Service shut down logging in that area. Now, understand that in the national parks, it's not clear-cut logging. They're going in in the past. They would go in and they would take standing deadwood out which reduces the chances of a catastrophic fire, like we saw here in Bastrop, just outside of Austin, where it burned 99% uh, of the uh, state park that was there, or like we saw in Yellowstone. Devastating wildfires, because they, the policy now is not what it used to be. I had an uncle who was a uh, head of the forestry department at the University of Missouri, and that is irresponsible to manage the forest that way. It was a win-win situation. You could uh, control wildfires and you could have an economy there. They took that down and instead what they did was they gave welfare payments to the people who had previously made money in the logging industry. After yeah. 10 years, they stopped that. That's what's going to happen to this. They're right. going to ease the transition into a servitude state. Right. Because we're not only, we're now at the point where we're losing our service jobs as well as our manufacturing jobs. Mm -hmm. We're getting a lowered wage base. But again, it's not even about that. It's about the sovereignty and it's about the fact that our congressmen and senators would abdicate their responsibility to pass these laws. And we've got right. all the Republicans doing it, all the Republicans who are running for president, and you've got Obama doing it. There's a civil war in the Democrat Party, and they always run these things through with a Democrat president. Clinton ran through NAFTA, and you got Obama to run through Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Transatlantic Partnership, TTIP. Uh, that's where they're going to put it through because uh, everybody would smell a, uh, a rotten fish if it was coming through from the Republicans. They right. would say this is nothing but corporatism. And that's what it is. It's corporatism. Right. This is not free trade any more than the bank bailouts were capitalism or free markets. It's not free markets. It's right. only capitalism. And that's why it's so obvious when you see the, the, the Republicans rallying around this and trying to let this be Obama's one big thing that he can push through before yeah. 2016 happens. It's oh, absolutely. Quite clear. They say it, it defines his legacy. Well, you know what it does define? It defines these presidential candidates for us. Mm. Because you have to look at this and say, why would they do this? Are they bought and sold? They can't be that stupid. I, I really can't believe that they're that stupid, that they could look at NAFTA and make the same mistakes again, see where that is leading, but that they would abdicate their responsibility to make the laws to make treaties. Well, just one last thing. I mean, do you think that this is, you know, they're telling us, well, we've got to do this now or we won't have any time to turn back. Is this because of what is happening with China and Russia and, and a lot of the other BRICS countries moving away from the, the dollar? So now we've got to get our presence there and America will be... There is. They always more. try to put that kind of pressure on us. If there's any pressure, it's because they've had this 2020, 2025 uh, time frame where they've been talking about radically changing civilization. Mm. Uh, maybe that's what they're really concerned about. Maybe that's really their time frame. I don't know. All I can say is it is absolutely is not necessary. Uh, it is going to be a very harmful thing. And we need people to understand and get a bigger picture about this. This isn't something that only the unions should be standing up against. Mm -hmm. Republicans need to understand that this is anti-business. This is going to shut down small businesses. It is absolutely going to crush them under the weight of the multinationals because it's being written by those guys. And you're going to lose the free market. You're not going to have free trade. You're not even going to have a free market inside your country. They're going to shut down the small guys. And it's going to be a great uh, uh, step towards concentration of wealth, much mm -hmm. greater than we've seen. And it's going to be much faster than we've seen. Wow. Well, thank you, David. And it is especially so important for all of us to speak out now as we have these candidates out there putting their hats in the game to run for the president to just speak up and let them know that we're not going to be pimped out anymore to corporate America or to the new world order. Uh, well, stick around because coming up, I'm going to be speaking with filmmaker Kevin Booth. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about what's going on with the medicinal marijuana. That's coming up next.
another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. It's stimulating, mind-expanding, safer to use than alcohol. It's the in thing. Such are the myths concerning marijuana. Myths that lull thousands of young people into experimenting with a noxious weed. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. Should marijuana be legalized? We'll debate the pros and cons right now. Marijuana leads to doing worse things. That's just a fact. I don't care what anybody says. The drug war is a total failure, and the federal drug war ought to be re revisited and for the most part gotten rid of. This has corrupted our government. It has destroyed our due process, and it is withholding from people medicine that is very effective, and we need to stop it. We need to roll prohibition back right now. Marijuana is natural. You know, there's so many different things that you can use it for, uh, including, you know, helping cancer patients. I'm a Christian minister, yeah, and I believe, you know, Jesus will be okay with it. There have been studies proven that children who have 400 seizures a day, that's intense. It's like, it's like a seizure a minute who can't stop just violently convulsing have been helped and have stopped having seizures up like after two to two, three days after applying the cannabinoid oil treatment to themselves, like in their food or something like that. Like that's incredible. There's proof of that. Like it's all over the internet. The mandatory minimums locking people up for nonviolent crimes for very long periods of time where there's no discretion for the fact that they were nonviolent, that this is their first offense. No, just lock them up. You two-bit heroes <laughs> making life miserable for innocent children. Why don't you go out and hunt real criminals? We got a tip on this drag race. But when we found the marijuana, well, sir, that's a very serious charge. Think about the tens of billions of dollars that Big Pharma makes a year, with close to 20% of the population being on antidepressants, when every major study shows that marijuana absolutely destroys depression in people, and Prozac can't even prove that it has any measurable positive effect, and they have to put on the insert that it may make you commit suicide. Things like alcohol kill people daily, um, and it's legal because it can be taxed. Happy to deliver alcohol, but weed is illegal, right? Hey, bud, <laughs> let's party. <laughs> However, that the pharmaceutical companies should stay away. Like, just keep it natural. Let's have the sun out, you know, like, roast the seeds in the dirt. You know, like, just stay away, you know, let it be, you know, like, let it grow organically, and, like, that's that's what will help people. It should definitely should not be legal because that's helping us make money on the streets. And prohibition. That's right. Peace. What's the obstacle? What what the hell is stopping it? What, what, why is Texas taking so long? Because we're in Texas, dude. Yeah.
they haven't Texas. figured out how to make money off of it yet. They're, no, they're no, looking they, at all they, the benefits there, from other states. They're so states. fucking right wing. They, they're, they, they don't care about the health benefits. They know that we're making so much money off the cancer and whatnot. They want us to be unhealthy. There's so many benefits for something that's natural. We need to look more into natural medicines and not things that are scientifically made in a lab. This is not reefer madness. This is one big industry that has political clout trying to shut down another industry that basically has uh, a, a product that grows freely and is not owned by anybody. I don't want the government regulating my marijuana. Okay, but right now they're regulating you. They'll arrest you if you smoke it. That's, That's regulation. True. But only if I get caught. Look at what the pharmaceutical companies are doing. They want to take away our informed consent and violate the Nuremberg Code, saying that they can inject us with whatever they deem to be necessary at any given time. We should be very, very concerned about this. I didn't know you were a weedhead, Tony. All my friends are. Well, today is 420, and you may or may not know that it's sort of celebrated as a 4th of July for stoners. But what about those that want to celebrate marijuana for its medicinal qualities? Uh, specifically, a lot of parents out there that want to be able to provide an alternative for their children, an alternative therapy uh, for things like Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, seizures. The list goes on and on. We have a lot of parents speaking out, calling on their lawmakers uh, to keep medicinal marijuana bills alive and get it to the point where we can go ahead and get some of these passed in some more states. Now, there's an article up today. The state seizes an 11-year-old and then arrests his mother after he was defending a medical marijuana during a school presentation. And this whole ordeal started uh, when counselors at the school were conducting a drug education class. And the young boy who had previously lived in Colorado for a period of time, he was disagreeing with some of these anti-pot points that were being made by school officials. And he said, my mom says different things, like she calls it cannabis and not marijuana. And he let them know how educated he was on the facts. And of course, this frightened the teachers who immediately then called uh, officials. They went on to raid the home of the woman who is a cannabis oil activist they raided her home based on things that the boy was saying in school, and they had the, the boy locked up. Neither of his parents were alerted about the fact that police officials were questioning her 11-year-old, which is against the law. So obviously going out of their way to really push back against medicinal marijuana. It's just the most frightening thing that's out there, and it's a plant. So joining me today is filmmaker Kevin Booth. Uh, he's the award-winning documentary filmmaker of American Drug War 1 and 2, as well as How Weed Won the West. You can find those films and more at InfoWarsStore.com. So, Kevin Booth, thank you for taking the time out of your celebrations here today on 420 <laughs> to join us. <laughs> no problem. It was easy to do. I appreciate you guys calling me at the last second like that. It's great. Hey, well, you're the man for a day like today. So what do you think about some of these uh, s stories that are coming out? Last week, we have a story of a state seizing an 11-year-old uh, because he was at school and they were giving him sort of a drug education class. And he said, well, wait a minute. That's not what my mom calls marijuana. She calls it cannabis. And she helped cure my Crohn's disease with this. And of course, immediately, uh, the school took him in back with the principal and they, the cops went and raided the woman's home. What do you think about that? I know I was just watching that just now and I love it because you know we my wife and I went through the whole foster thing and I love the way the woman is on the doorstep and she's like I'm from DCF here's a pamphlet that's exactly I mean that <laughs> that's like DCF to the T like here's a pamphlet like here's a pamphlet about what your government is screwing you this is, this is to explain to you how we're screwing you here's a pamphlet right uh yeah and the fact that she just had uh, the oil in there the rick simpson oil uh kind of proves that she's not really like a, a pot smoker or a dealer or anything like that there's only one reason i don't know anybody who uses the rick simpson oil uh recreationally or as a party drug uh i've I, i've never even tried i've tried a little tiny bit of it and it's really not even all that fun for me i mean there's probably people out there going to disagree with that so she's obviously doing this medicinally 
but it's just so classic. Um, uh, I don't know. I've been to Kansas, so I get it. I've been to Colorado and I've been to Kansas, mm-hmm. so I can totally see that happening. Like the kid, the kid just came from Colorado where everybody's free to do what they want. And Oh, by the way, the local economy is thriving. And Oh, although by the way, everybody is like healthy and beautiful and gorgeous looking crime's gone down. Uh, my only question is, is why did she move from Colorado to Kansas? That's the only <laughs> part I have the whole story. I don't understand everything else. The, the police being total jerks in Kansas. I get everybody being corrupt jerks. Yeah. Uh, I get, I get the rest of the story. Why did she go to Kansas? Maybe it was a family reason. Um, it's horrible. I hope things work out for her. But but the idea that, oh, the, the government is going to take away my children to save me and then put me in a house with meth smoking pedophiles. Right. And uh, obviously you point that out in one of your films about how, you know, you can have your state sponsored drugs given to these kids who are taken into foster care and, and things like that. The state will pump them full of pharmaceutical drugs. But if a parent wants to provide an alternative a natural alternative for their child. Uh, here, she was helping treat Crohn's disease. We just had a whole bunch of Austin moms here last Thursday calling on lawmakers to uh, provide medical marijuana bills, keep them alive, um, because they want to be able to treat autism. And they're hearing a lot about uh, some success stories with parents treating autism. So this is a natural alternative. And like you said, a lot of times with the oil and things like that, it's not giving kids a high. Um, a lot of times it's like a lotion you can just rub on the skin and things like that. So why, why this issue to stop something that's natural? I mean, most parents, they just want to be able to care for their children and give them whatever options are out there. Why not the marijuana? And why do you want to push drugs that are, you know, SSRIs, mass murder pills, basically? I'd rather have my kid <laughs> go into class with someone with cannabis oil than, you know, on an SSRI. Oh yeah, and I I just I just uh, flew Lufthansa last week, and and uh, you know they're talking they're like search, while this guy is like searching my shoes, I was uh, going, have you checked? Today? Can we search the pilot for Prozac? You know, seriously, because I'm not even scared of terrorists anymore. Now that we have pilots, depressed pilots, crashing planes, I mean, game over, right? What else? What else are you gonna do? But to answer your question. It's the same old thing. It's because there's more money and guys like Chris Christie uh, keeping it illegal. Why? Because like if they took marijuana out of the uh, category, how's he going to arrest everybody? How's he going to keep his little police departments and all his little cronies that probably are backing him uh, in business? So he has to take that position. But it's uh, sad for him that he'll never win by taking that position because I, w- I would guess that probably at least 60% of all Americans believe it should be legalized now. So game over for Chris Christie. Yeah, and especially where it's appropriate medicinally. So what do you think about, we have a lot of the candidates now speaking out on where they stand on legalization or decriminalization. Uh, Rand Paul just recently called out Jeb Bush uh, because he said, if you got MS in Florida, Jeb Bush voted to put you in jail if you go to the local drugstore and try to get some of this medicinal marijuana, yet he was doing it, Jeb Bush was doing it recreationally, and that was completely okay. For him, it's okay, but if you want to treat your child with Crohn's disease or if you have multiple sclerosis and marijuana is the only thing that works for you, you're going to jail. So it's a total double standard. It's it's time for this country to grow up and just let go of all this ridiculousness. And the idea, too, going back to that other story about the woman's son getting taken away, that uh. That somehow because, you know, it, it's like this idea that or that Chris Christie was saying that, um, you know, I don't want children to do it. Well, of course, we don't want children to do it. You know, there, there's plenty of legal things out there. Uh, uh, you know, gambling is legal. Does that mean I want my little child to gamble? No. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it's medicine. It's medicine. If you want to take a bunch of it and get really wasted, you can. But once again, and I know this is obvious and it's it's just the most obvious thing, but looking at Chris Christie, this big, fat, bloated, most unhealthy, why is it always <laughs> why is it always like the really unhealthy people that are giving you the bad advice? Like every time if I go to a doctor and I'm like, well, what about marijuana or what about juicing or what about any of that? It's always going to be like the super fat, pasty looking, like horribly unhealthy looking person 
that's going to be telling you like there's no evidence that juicing is good for you and oh just stay away from the marijuana and here take these pills exactly and it's just it never fails it never <laughs> fails and then go to colorado all you got to do is go to the colorado airport and every single person has like a perfect tan and white teeth and mm -hmm. they're all like perfectly fit and eating granola with their happy children and forget about it it's it's like a little utopia a little sunny utopia uh there is no argument other than money there's right. no other reason it's just all about money and so but i think most people are waking up i think most people mm -hmm. are realizing that and it's just you know let them go through this again let them go through it one more time let them like if they want to go through another election by thinking that somehow you bringing up some old ideals from the 50s or something is going to help them win let them waste their money and time who cares yeah absolutely because it hasn't always been illegal in fact it's been used for thousands of years medicinally and there's been all sorts of uh, praise for it and it seems like in public the government is saying that they're you know it's not a medicine but privately they're working on figuring out how they can patent uh, seeking the rights to that medicine uh, CNN took I us mean, on a tour of the only federal weed farm in America so it's a Ole Miss students at Ole Miss are actually they're studying this big crop of marijuana for its medicinal quality so behind the scenes they're figuring out what they can do with it but you know for the rest of us, we're just all a bunch of hoodlums that just want to get high. I mean, here, look, I brought a little plant. I mean, anybody can put a little seed in the ground. It's just a little plant. And uh, I refuse to believe that a plant that grows naturally is evil. In fact, I'll take it one step further and say, if you're putting people in cages for doing something or using something or growing something that was here naturally before we were, then you're a devil worshiper. <laughs> <laughs> you are an extremist there with that plant. Sorry, sorry. That's, that is a plant. It's straight from the earth. Isn't this supposed to be like the harvest? It's kind of <laughs> like the. It's like the St. Patrick's Day for potheads, isn't it? Yeah, it's like our our Fourth of July for stoners. The we're all supposed to be out in the fields freedom. planting today. Yeah, we're supposed to be planting today. I think it's yeah, a spring. It's some Earth sort of a spring Day. Ritual. Yes, it's Earth exactly. Day. I know. So this is a little, <laughs> these are little baby clones and, and uh, this is how you get it started. Little, little That's how you clones. celebrate Earth Day is you're supposed yep. to plant a tree and they didn't specify what kind of seeds you're supposed to plant. Now, what do you think moving forward, what do you think are going to be some opportunities for people out there? I mean, we were just uh, speaking earlier about if Monsanto or co companies like this are able to somehow patent seeds, well, an alternative to that would be able to provide uh, non-genetically modified seeds and things like that. But what are some other opportunities out there kind of moving forward with this? Because I think eventually it's all going to be decriminalized and overturned once more people just realize it's just a plant. Uh, well, we were talking about the other guest we were going to try to get on today, and he, he was uh, too busy. We'll get him on next time. Is, uh, he goes by the name Big Mike, Mike Stramatis, and he's actually the head of a huge company called advanced nutrients which is a, a, a the company that makes all the the grove solutions like voodoo juice for roots etc and they're actually kind of going neck and neck with monsanto so he'd be a really good guest to talk about that but you know it's a weird thing i mean it, it'll be interesting to see when when monsanto of course they're going to make some genetically modified pot uh but the difference between pot and everything else is that everybody can do it so i think i think Marijuana is like this other thing. It's different than tobacco. It's different than some of these other things. And the more that big brother tries to step on it, the stronger it gets. And I think, uh, and I, and so I, I really, I, I, maybe I'm hopeful. Maybe I was stupid. Maybe we're going to get, you know, maybe, maybe Monsanto is going to come in and, and introduce something into the strains that's going to destroy all the pot and make it so we can't grow it. But I just have a hard time believing that, that, that it's going to work this time for Monsanto. Yeah, I think, what is there, like 27 states now that are for the decriminalization, at least, uh, if not allowing people to uh, grow grow marijuana for personal use. I mean, obviously, we're not yeah. talking about huge grow operations here, but it's definitely uh, the tides are turning here in this debate. Um, but what do you think is going to happen if, if it is decriminalized? And we've, we're already seeing Obama, uh, he has shortened the sentences of people who were charged with these you know, astronomical mandatory minimums just for maybe carrying a joint or something like that. What do you think are going to be some of the repercussions going forward, uh, the big changes in the drug war? 
you know, I don't know. I mean, it, you, when you go to Colorado, they've jumped to like a further extreme. Uh, obviously, I think probably the next step is going to be all these synthetic drugs. You know, when it gets to the point where there's people in laboratories now making synthetic cannabinoids, uh, what would you rather, you know, seriously, you're going to push this thing so far to where the children are going to be doing cannabinoids made in a laboratory other than like a plant? Seriously. Right. Well, mom, we... dad, mom and dad out there, this, this, I know you don't want your kids to be stoned, but if you have to make a choice, you want it to be natural, just like anything else in this world. Natural is always better. Right. And well, that was actually the big thing that happened uh, last year. They were reporting about all of these deaths from kids getting their hands on spice, which was a totally legal yeah, that's one of alternative, them. Yeah. which it was, it was really obvious that once a reporter kind of took it a step further and said, you know, who, who created this synthetic marijuana? And then it turned out it was actually a pharmaceutical company that was able to uh, extract that, you know, p part of the uh, marijuana and put it into the spice and they were able to patent it. It's a pharmaceutical company that was able to create the spice, the synthetic right, cannabinoid. Right. Well, what's, well, what's happening there, I, I actually just watched a Vice episode about it last night, was that there's a guy in New Zealand uh, it was like this brilliant synthetic drug guy, and he's he's creating all these drugs, including synthetic cannabinoids, uh, other versions of MDMA, which is ecstasy, and and like safer alternatives to crystal meth, and all these things. He's creating this laboratory, and <laughs> his brand is like supposedly safe, and there hasn't been any deaths from it. But what's happening? Then all these big Chinese companies and all these other companies are coming reproducing his brand, and that's what's flooding the market with with knockoffs of what he does, and that's what's killing everybody. Uh, so it's, it's like, people are always going to do what you don't allow them to do. You, you can never legislate morality. It doesn't work, never has worked. It's never going to work. Um, and so, you know, if, I don't know. All, all I can say is that if everybody just grew a little bit of pot in their own yards, they could use it, not use it, whatever, but it's going to break the whole, uh, the whole black market. Right. Yeah. And a lot of Chris Christie and others saying it's a gateway drug. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but so is that what you want to tell everyone celebrating 420 today? What do you want to tell everyone out there? Uh, you know, Obama says Congress isn't going to change the law on a national basis anytime soon. Should we be telling those people enjoying this holiday to go out and vote, at least on the local level? Like, what do we want people to do to start taking action? Just get involved. Uh, you know, I mean, I hate to tell people to break the law, but if everybody went out and just planted some marijuana, like imagine if just millions of people all at once planted marijuana all over the country and just kept planting it and planting it and planting it. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> uh, you know, and I know, I, I know it's going to be, it, it sucks that it's such a hard struggle in Texas because Austin, uh, you know, Austin's come on, Austin needs weed. Come on. Like I get Fort Worth and, and some of these other places, but come on, Austin needs weed. Come on, people. If you want Austin to be the utopia that everybody's bragging about around the world. But, uh, you know, get involved, so you know, close. join join your activist groups uh, and don't be afraid of the government. Don't be afraid to be right. You know what I mean? Because I think just don't be afraid to be right. Be like Alex, fight for your rights. And, and, and it's and growing marijuana and, and doing this, it's not about getting high, although that's one of the fun side effects, but it's just another exercise of our freedoms. And like the government should not be allowed to tell us that we can't grow something that just grows naturally. It's, it's insane. And it's just another thing that needs to stop. Absolutely. I wouldn't want to be a politician on the losing side of the battle, telling parents that they have to watch their children die rather than providing them with an alternative natural uh, product that can actually help their children improve their lives tremendously. Seizures, autism, Crohn's disease, it goes on and on. So definitely wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of that debate here in you know 2016 and beyond. Well, Kevin, uh, any, any last words? <laughs> you know, it's, it's just amazing how far people will go to save some little profit margin and, and but people that it look anybody out there unless you're profiting from the police kicking down doors okay if you if you profit when the police kick down the door then go ahead and keep doing what you're doing but if you don't profit from the police kicking down doors and locking people in cages then please join the right side of the team you know it's right and you know that history is on our side absolutely
Well, thank you for joining us. Enjoy sure, the rest of your you. day. All right, you too. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us on the show tonight. If you are watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and become a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel. And then you can also become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. You help support this operation with your subscription and everything that you've purchased at the InfoWars store. So we thank you. We'll see you here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.